All right, everyone, welcome back to us as reacting videos. Um, in this one, we're going to deep dive into Burp Suite. So if you have not yet watched and set up your Burp Suite, I recommend watching the video already on the playlist and making sure your Burp is ready to go. Uh, for this video, we will be covering three or four Burp uh, tabs. So it will be repeater, intruder, and decoder for main parts of it. I will go in general about other tabs and describe what each of them do because each of them have an important role to play when it comes to using Burp Suite and understanding or using it when you're doing your security test. So, um, as you, uh, if you want to follow along on the video, feel free to do so. I'll be using a, a Vernival website for this to showcase how Burp Suite works. So once you open Burp Suite, make sure, you know, once this opens up, go to your Burp and make sure it's listening on Firefox. So Firefox has the proxy config setups. Uh, if you don't have it yet, as I said before, make sure you use the playlist. If it is set up, you will see the proxy already start working because my Firefox settings here um, in the settings option already has the manual proxy configuration set. So we're just going to let that be as it is. And you can also see I have my uh, certificate setups on Firefox. So loading sites like google.com will work without any kind of secure connection issues. Uh, make sure those are all working fine for you. We will you will be using that when it comes to testing CTF sites that we'll be using as well as when it comes to doing if you are interested on uh, doing bug bounties and stuff like that. So first I'm just going to focus on burp right now. Let's ignore everything here. So I'm just going to go over some of these tabs here and explain what each of these do. So let's get started with HTTP history which is under the proxy tab. So if you look under proxy tab we have intercept HTTP history, WebSockets history, and options. Options is super useful if you want to listen on different ports. So right now my burp is listening on port 8080 in my local host. So it says the interface is 127001 with port um, 8080. And make sure that when you're doing this, you know, you have that correct set up based on how your Firefox is working. And then all you have to do after that is basically you know set it as it needs so for example if you want to edit it just hit edit and you can change the ports and you can change the certificate for it so if you want to generate your own you can do it with a self-signed otherwise burp will generate its own and that's where you use the burp slash url to download the certificate um, the bind to port tells which port to listen on so you can change this to be any port you want uh, make sure it's not a port that's already used because burp will not work otherwise and loopback only tells it to listen on 127001. You can also do all interface, which means listen on every um, IP address that your system currently has enrolled. So, for example, if you do specific address, you can see all the IP address you have. So, some of these are MAC address uh, based, and there are some with IPv6. So, 2600170 is my IPv6 IP. So, if a system if your system or if your network supports IPv6, you can use that as well. 192.168.170 is my inter internal IP address for my in my home network for this computer. So I can use that if I'm doing my mobile security test. We will cover mobile security in our different videos. Now for this, I'm just going to go with loopback because that's what my burp is set up to. So whenever you make any changes to the proxy listener, make sure your burp uh, or your Firefox is set up on the right way. Otherwise, it will not be able to send any request. Hit OK and make sure you have it running because if you have it unchecked, if we load google.com or something, it's not going to go through this uh, burp suite. So burp will no longer be listening and you'll see it says the proxy server is refusing connections. So make sure that's listening. And also, if you ever have problem where you see like burp is not able to listen, make sure you don't have multiple instances of burp running. So for example, if I were to open another Burp Suite uh, Community Edison right now, you will see that the new one will not be listening um, in any kind of listening. So it will not be listening on port 800, 8080. For example, Burp will tell me, it will say, if I go to proxy, it will say no proxy listeners are currently running, go in the options tab to enable a listener. The reason is I already have a listener on 8080, so the port is already being used. And because I say do on port 80 here, Burp will not be able to do it because it's a used port at that point. So make sure you don't have multiple instances running in those cases. Now let's get back here with the options tab. 
there's also intercept client request we'll get back onto that when we discuss what targets to intercept and what to ignore and there's also intercept server response now these are useful when you uh, have chances where there's a website that's basically giving you access based on how it responded with and you can if you can modify those response to for example if it says admin false and if you want to modify you can use that so let me show how that will work it is like in client request we're already intercepting it so we can see in firefox or in intercept tab here but for your server response is not listening so you'll say intercept based on the following rules and currently it says if the content type header matches text so if the content type which is like what kind of request you are sending matches or the response from the website matches to be a text or and not something like application php html or something then it will show the server response and you can also modify any of these rules so what i usually like to do is if i'm doing server response i'll say i'll hit this which says and status codes does not match i'll edit that to say or which means if that is true or the status code matches 200 so what that means is if the server responded properly right it doesn't matter what responded with but if the status code said 200 show me the response and I'll hit OK and then hit intercept and make sure to check that so now if we for example go to intercept turn it on go to google.com once I make a request here you can see I can see the response from Google here so the response you'll usually see on repeater or the website you can see it here and the reason it showed up is not because the content type the content type is text but it's also html so let's say if the content type was something else it will not with the previous setup it will not so but because i also have or status code has 200 it will manage it it will make sure it's the right value and because it's true it will show me that that way i can just play around with it now next thing on the options tab um, there are WebSocket messages we'll cover WebSocket in the future you also have match and replace so if you want to write something that will replace your user agent um, in your request header you can also write that so for example it says if user agent matches um, so it says if there's user agent slash always replace that with that so for example if I want to say if user agent you know replace that with let's say OSS red team right and I'll say the comment can be whatever it is I'll hit OK and I'll turn that on so now if I were to go to intercept and load google.com you'll see that now all my user agents will have OSS red team on them uh, the place where this comes useful is if you're doing a security audit and if the company wants you to have a header for you to be identified in the system so for example some companies will ask you to write something like X hacker and your name or something like that that way they can tell their logs or like their incident response team to you know split the log based on that to see what you're doing so let's say if you're hired to ethically hack or test a website you can use that for that so that's where this comes to use so I'm just going to hit disable so make sure you enable it if you want to replace that um, SSL pass through this is if you want to ignore the certs and make it just go to the website I will cover that on other videos in the future um, now let's jump to WebSocket history and HTTP history at the same time so WebSockets are a different type of request you can send them on repeater they're um, they're basically like this kind of messages that are sent raw to the website so they'll be using WSS schema we're not going to cover WebSockets on the winter system. We might cover them on the spring. So I'll deep dive into the history for WebSockets there. Uh, but let's get to SCTP history. So what happens with SCTP history is let's say you are testing a website. You know, you're sending millions of requests here. There's multiple requests on that website. And then you accidentally forward a request which you wanted to send to repeater. Now there is two options for you in that case, right? Because if you are sending to repeater, you have to replay the request on Firefox and redo the whole process and intercept again. Or you can use the SCTP history to find that request and then send it to repeater. So as you can see right now, I have around 69 requests here on uh, my SCTP history, and it keeps getting you know it keeps getting bigger and bigger as I load other websites and as it intercepts or makes history of all of those. And we can see the URL it sent it to, and the so URL it sent it to the methods and the host. So let's say if you're testing, you know, you can also do sorting by host. 
so that way you can see all your hosts at the same time so if I'm testing Google and I want to see all the uh, requests that I'm making to Google or if I want to see a list of requests I made I can just do host you know list it um, alphabetically so it goes from A to Z and then I can see google.com and all the links I have all the requests I have made with post get and the URLs so let's say if I wanted to see, you know replay this request on repeater all I have to do is load that right click and send to repeater and it will show up here we're going to cover repeater in a while so I'll leave it open here for now let's jump back to SCTP history and you can see all the MIME types so that's pretty much with SCTP history uh, if you have a Burp Pro version what you can also do is you can filter by search term so usually if you have Burp Pro you can search by um, you know host name the response code or whatever you want to search it with now with free version you can also say just show me PSP right so if I want to just see ASP, XP, XJSP and PSP I can do that and do not hit anywhere else so do not hit so all because if it does so all it will just on highlight all of those it will just go with whatever it was before all you have to do is so only and then just click anywhere outside here so if you click this you can see right now I'm getting an empty result and that's because I don't have any of these um, on any of the paths I tested but if I were to change it to something like txt and go here you'll see I'll see some of the Firefox requests that were made so that's really useful yeah, if you know the website we're testing was using PHP so you can you know list it by host and then change it to have PHP so that becomes super useful you can also do one the Iniscope items we'll talk about that pretty soon you can also sort by MIME types so if you don't want to see images so let's see if I just want to see no script no CSS no other text no flash no other binary and I want to just see 200 responses I'll do that and as you can see it sorted it down to just the responses that I needed so all of these are HTML formats all of them the status code was 204 200 101 so none of these were like 300 or 400 right so it's loading me anything that's in 200 range or anything less than that because there's no option for 100 and it's not showing me anything that had 500 plus so if it had like something between 500 to 600 it's not showing me that and if I want to see if I was redirected anywhere with 300 I'll just do that and I can see it so just want to add on to this when I'm you know mentioning status code I highly recommend you guys to look up all the status codes and what they mean because that will be super useful when you're testing something if you know what the response code means so just to give a quick background 200 usually means your response was a success uh, 302 means you're being redirected so for example if you check the response page you can see there will be a location header which tells the website or the browser where to send you so 302 means this snippets.cdn is telling the browser to redirect that request to this new URL and if you have things like 204 that means there was no content so it was usually blank request or nothing was modified and if you have something around the 500 ranges if it's specifically 500 that means there was a server error so let's see if we have any 500 uh, we do not have any 500 so that's pretty good because we're testing websites that are working uh, 400 usually have different things so if you have 403 that means X is denied 404 means not found so those are really useful to have so you know as I said again look up those status codes see what they mean and go based on that so that's SDTP history in the not cell uh, let's go to intercept tab so this is where most of your things will happen when you're playing around with websites so for example makes always make sure your intercept is on if you're testing something and you want to see it on uh, burp otherwise it will just go through so for example if I were to load hacker1.com right now I'll not see any of the request here but if I want to see hacker1.com I can see it here so if I do this and as you can see I have all the hacker1 request so even though I did not intercept anything SCTP history will log every request that goes from Firefox to my burp suite on you know to the proxy so that's super useful like let's say if you miss to hit intercept but you know what target you're hitting you can uh, list them by the host name and then uh, check the number so that's the uh, request ID so the one with the largest number is the latest request so 135 this was the latest request that um, that was made by Firefox on hack1.com so that makes it super easy to see which one was your you know recent request that you sent that way you can play around with it if you missed to intercept it but on, on intercept 
as you can see these are currently disabled because I do not have the intercept on so if you want to intercept something just do intercept on load the website and you'll be able to see the request here now we're I'm going to quickly explain what some of these means so the get parameter is your request parameter how you are sending the request uh, usually those will be get post head options delete patch and put um, again like status code I recommend looking them up and see what each of them stands for when you're sending a request that's why it's easier for you when you're testing a website and you see what the website is doing host is your target so www.hackerone.com in this case and in here you can see it says request to hackerone.com with the port and the IP uh, the one for in this case is a Cloudflare IP uh, you can ignore the fact about what those IP mean we'll talk about it when times comes and user agent is basically identifying what browser you use uh, these things are kind of used by companies to see what are their users most frequently used browsers so it's more for analytics things it will never be used for authentication um, you might see them used for authentication in things like CTF but a real life website will technically not use them if they do use it understand that there will be a vulnerability on it so if you're identifying a user or authenticating someone or you know adding a block on a page that says if a user agent does not match internal security system then do not know the user they can a, an attacker can always just say my user agent is internal security system right and the server will think it's a valid user and load the page so if any website is trusting user agent to be something to authenticate a user with then make sure you know you'll know that's going to be vulnerable the connection close means that's where the connection request ends so all the headers for most of that cookies are your um, session cookies and other identifiers for you I do not yet have a session cookie here because I have not logged in on hacker one and then we have um, accept language this is for when you're translating stuff so if hacker one were to translate something for me they might change the accept language to be uh, Spanish Hindi whatever it is based on what they need to send next thing is the accept header and that's what it is going to accept so this becomes useful if you're testing API requests um, I'll kind of show that when I show hacker one in a while but basically it tells that I'm going to accept these headers in the response on the content type from the server so I can say I can only accept application JSON instead of text HTML and stuff like that so those are kind of useful when you're playing around with different request type with API's so let's hit forward and as you can see there's more requests being made this is a blink that was due to a redirect and then I have Mozilla that work so in this one I'm going to cover something um, that's going to help you in your test so you know usually if you're testing a website you just want to see that request being intercepted right there's no fun on me seeing what request is sending to Mozilla.org these are more analytics stuff that Mozilla sends on the background and I don't want to have that so in those cases I'll be using the target and the options tab we'll get to that in about a minute so let me quickly forward that so you know every time you're sending a request make sure to hit forward because otherwise it will just be stuck here so as you can see hacker one keeps trying to load on here but nothing's loading for them so make sure to hit forward that's why it's easier you know it goes through and if you don't want to intercept anything just hit intercept off and everything will go through you'll not see anything here all right so something more um, the raw headers and hex tab inside the intercept so if I load hacker one again you'll see there's a param tab and that will tell you what parameters I'm sending so in this case I'm just sending cookies instead of URL parameters so if I were to add something uh, right here so let's say right and if I go to params you'll see that it has uh, URL parameters so these are useful to see what parameters you are sending so if there's cookies it will show you that based on the type the name so names are really useful for you to know what parameters the website is accepting and the value of the parameter so in this case in mine I'm sending the group parameter mode and red team and then the values are location JSON and OSS and you can see all of that here the headers will show all the headers that I talked about here so all the get header like the request header type host user agent um, the accept so you can see before it was HTML and now I'm making API request so I'm telling the website respond with the JSON or JavaScript that way I can parse it if I'm writing a Python web app or something like that 
and it's this referrer that's telling the website where I'm coming from so it tells you know if someone at liver.co is um, analyzing my request it will tell where I'm coming from in this case hackerone.com the origin this is related to course attack so we'll talk about that when we discuss cross origin resource sharing there's headers as I said and these are the hex values so each things that you send you know hex values will help identify how you're sending that so you might have seen hex values previously in some of the challenges we have done but hex values are also useful if you're modifying just hex and then you know, messing around with file uploads um, you can comment stuff so if you want to send this repeater and comment saying super secret um, highlight it like that and then all I have to do is raw send to repeater and you can see you know all the requests that I have made here on the repeater tab so you can comment individually on repeater or you can do the comment here and that will get saved on HTTP history and other than that let's see if I missed anything uh, let's do a search item real quick so on the intercept tab also there's something that you can search here so if you're making a request and there's a lot of data there right and if you want to see if your and if the user input that you send matches there or if you want to modify something and if you want to see if it's there on the HTML response when you're intercepting the server uh, you can use the search tab to search for items and it will highlight it for you so let's say if I want to search for the keyword hacker one I'll just type hacker one and it will tell me where hacker one is seen so the URL parameter uh, URL path origin and refer so that is another useful term if you want to search like let's say if you are editing a website and you want to see if your username is in so on the website you can just do like for example if I want to see my username Rihal Rohan I'll just type it and if it is there it will let me know alright so these are all the errors so let's turn that off and that's the proxy tab next thing we're going to cover is the target so target is if you want to scan stuff from um, burp so burp will allow you to scan stuff make maps of the websites you have visited so as you visit websites burp will throw them inside the target so you can see all the links inside that website so for example I have visited hacker one and if I want to see every request on hacker one all I have to do is go down and I'll see there's hacker one here and hit this and then it shows me all the requests that it detected on hacker one so whether it's through a URL that was on the HTML so if there was hyperlinks it will grab it from there if it's my previous history it will show those so this becomes useful if you're if you want to see all the requests there so for example if you're just browsing a website to see how it works this kind of works as a recon notes section where you can have a list of all your parameters to play around with once you finish playing you know understanding the website and see what it is doing so this is super useful with the sitemap and in target you also have something called scope once you go on scope you can tell burp which one which things you want to intercept and which things you don't the way you do it is by doing add or exclude so you can either include in scope or you can exclude uh, if your include is empty like mine right now that tells burp to intercept everything or if your thing is excluding it will basically tell burp not to uh, intercept those but that can only be done once you go on options so in target let's say if I just want to include um, hacker one so I want to intercept nothing but hacker one I'll type that hit OK and it says you have added an item to target so we want Brock proxy to stop sending out of Haskell to the history or verb tools what that means is saying I just I told it verb that I just want to listen to hacker one so what it tells verb now is it's asking me if I want to ignore everything on history too right so that way it won't show me Firefox request it won't show me request to Facebook or anything like that and usually yes will work because that way it will prevent a lot of memories to be used and once you do this uh, go back on your proxy and on the options tab if you could scroll above similar to how intercept server response was you have intercept client request and it intercepts best on the rule so in this rule right now we just have you know as long as the file extension does not match gif jpeg ping css those so do not intercept js files do not intercept css files intercept everything else but i also want to tell it to intercept just my target scope so now if i were to load hacker1.com you'll see that it did not intercept the client side so if you go back here i have my intercept server response off on so if i turn this off and to intercept here you'll see I'm not seeing any requests here 
on my burp site and the reason is I'm making a request to www.hackerone.com and not just hackerone.com so let's say now the problem here is what if I'm testing a subdomain right and the way to fix that is if you go to target and you can edit this to have a regex so use select use advanced scope control and do add so it says protocol do any of those let's because the reason is if there's a change in a method type or an HTTP protocol it is useful to have any listed and for host let's just do hackerone.com but before that put a dot so it tells anything that has dot hackerone.com and hit ok now if I go to sitemap um, or proxy hit intercept load this you can see it loaded hackerone.com so now it's basically making yeah you know, intercepting anything that it has dot hackerone.com as this domain so all subdomains of hackerone will be intercepted you can do the same thing with server response remember when I was loading this hackerone.com and it was showing my response for www dot I can tell it to only show me server response for whatever is in target scope so once I go to target hit scope and sell telling me just to intercept dot hackerone.com as well as show me the server side response for dot hackerone so I turn intercept on hit intercept load this and you can see now I'll be able to see these but I don't see any other requests from like Firefox Google or something so if I were to load google.com here and hit enter you see nothing is being shown on my intercept because I don't have it on the target scope and that makes it really easy for you guys if you're just testing something and you want to ignore everything else so you know if you're testing let's say and doing our CTF and you want to have your base 64 decoder open or something like that on a website you can just list that here you know just put the CTF link here or something and it will only intercept those so that's how the intercept thing works we have covered proxy we have covered target now we're going to go to repeater what is a repeater tab repeater allows you to repeat a request multiple times so it's basically what the name says it is uh, what happens is let's say if I'm testing hacker one so if I want to let's say sign in right uh, make sure my intercept is off and let's say if I want to brute force this user so this is my email and if I want to brute force I'll just type random password hit sign in and right now it's allowing me to go through directly because something's wrong with my scope tab so I'll do edit and make sure it's actually able to work mm, I see why okay let me do that there's another reasons I can add but for this case I'm just going to do this because there's no subdomain on this it's allowing me to go through directly so let's say I want to do it again and as you can see my intercept is on at this point so I'll do this and you can see there's a request made here now usually you don't want to you know if you want to play with this you don't want to keep typing things here right so if I do forward um, and turn that off I don't want to keep typing the password so if I'm brute forcing someone's password I don't want to keep typing it here again and again and that's where repeater comes to use if I don't want to keep doing it again and again in the browser all I have to do is intercept hit sign in and user accent tab and click send to repeater and then turn this off so now I have repeater tab here let me maximize my burp so you can kind of you know, make it easier for you to read and all you have to do is now go hit go once you do that it will send the request and it responds back with result code invalid credentials so that's basically telling me if my credential was valid or not if it is it will reply back with you know my session token or something so this is repeater in kind of understanding how it works there's one small trick with repeater that I'm going to show right now so let's see you know in here I have one two and three but if I'm testing something and if I'm doing a lot of sending to repeater so if I'm sending every request to up that website to repeater this thing is just gonna, be gonna go right and do have five six seven eight and it will end up to 70 sometimes so your whole thing will get filled up and at that point if you're coming back to repeater you'll be like I don't know what's going on right you have 70 requests there you'll not see what it is doing and you are stuck you have to go through manually each request just find the request that you want to test so in that case the useful part is to rename your tabs so if you double click on any of these tabs it will allow you to rename it so for example if I want to replace this I'll just to double click you can see it has a text option there and I'll just say hacker one sign in feature now that makes it easier because now as you can see 
I have what 13 14 requests already right even though it's blank but if I want to test the sign in feature I see it right here I click on it I hit go again and you know, if I want to make modifications I'll just do that and hit go to see if it works and I see a response so that's a repeater tab there's nothing crazy going on there is you no know, it's the simple stuff um, it's also useful to modify your host targets so if you're testing the same request so if I know this is a valid request on let's say blah.hacker1 I can do that and change the target here so make sure to change your host and your configure target details so now if I know if I want to send that slash sessions post request to blah.hacker1 I don't have to you know try to manually send that all I do is modify my host in both sides here and hit go in this case it will probably say fail to connect right here because blah.hack1 doesn't exist but that's how you'll play with you know changing your websites if it's the same request you're sending so also an example of that with micro CMS on CT of hacker 101 today I think I covered everything on repeater the parameters headers and hex are similar to what we covered on the proxy so the things that you see there are exactly the same um, your email that I send, the password that I send on the parameters for the body. So this is like the body parameters that's telling it I'm sending it on here. So when someone tells, uh, ask you like what's in your post body parameters, you can just tell them the names or the post uh, names, parameters name, right? Parameter names are email, password, remember me, and fingerprint. And then you can tell the value is Rohan at Securify Inc., the fingerprint ID, remember me and the password and then we also have like cookies so you can tell them these are the cookie values here so all these are cookie values on the side and the center ones are the name or the name of the cookies so if someone asks you like what's the value for cookie cfduid which is right here and you'll just tell them well that's the value so that becomes super useful if you're modifying cookies and playing around with them and in the response part, if I go back with Hacker One, we have similar things. So compared to params, params are usually not that much in response because you will not have any parameter replying. So it's more of like HTML, JSON, whatever it is. And then you have headers, which is basically what I talked about before. So if you drag this here, it'll tell you what headers it is. So if someone tells you what is the response code, in this case it was 200. If someone asks you what was the content type of the request, it's a JSON format. So knowing the content type is super useful to know how to do your attacks. If you're testing APIs, they will likely be in JSON. If you uploaded an image, it will likely be IMG slash JPEG or however they're analyzing or changing. If they're encoding it to be a PNG, you'll see those. And then there's XSS protections, X frame options that's uh, to prevent click check attacks and the server name. So in this case it's showing Cloudflare because HackerOne utilizes Cloudflare for all their, um, all their websites. So sometimes you might see things like Nginx, Ubuntu or stuff like that. And the date is the date of the request that was sent so you can see the server is responding on GMT time so I have 10 January 2019 538 in GMT time. And then the hex is basically the same thing in the hex format so you'll see the text here and then you have the hex values here. So that's repeater tab in a nutshell. Now, in this case, I was manually, still manually sending it, uh, sending the login, right? Previously, I was doing it through browser, now I'm doing it through repeater. So for example, if I want to keep brute forcing, I'll just keep typing here, you know, typing again and again until I get a valid credential or something. But instead of manually typing it, you know, what if I can just send it with a brute force? What if I can just brute force the whole thing? So that's where your intruder tab comes to use. Now to send your request to intruder, if you are in repeater, all you have to do is right click and hit send to intruder. Or if you do control I, it will send it to intruder. So if I do control I, and if I go to my intruder tab, you can see it is highlighted in orange color. That means there's something new. And you can see the target is hacker one. And positions is the request that was here right so positions is basically where you want to inject something if you are modifying password or if you're modifying cookies this is where you'll highlight it right now it's telling burp to inject it on every single thing so everything that's highlighted right now is where burp will inject all the payloads when it's brute forcing however it is doing it and if you want to clear it just hit clear 
and then let's say if I want to just brute force password I'll just select ASD ASD that I have here and then hit add so once I hit the button it will highlight that it will tell Burp to always you know everything it's sending or everything is brute forcing do it there and that's where the payloads come so if I have if you have a list of passwords you can just paste it here you can load a txt file that it will analyze or you can just manually type it so if I want to type let's say ADMS OSS red team you know bird demos so it's telling these are the payloads to try and the payload count tells you how big your payload looks like so in this case it's just three because I have three requests it's sending but if you're doing a massive brute force so you have different payload types here right now it's a simple list that I have here but if you're doing brute force of all alphabets and numbers so in this case you'll go to brute forcer and you'll select a character set and you'll tell it like let's say if you know that my password is a four length minimum and probably it has 10 right in maximum length Burp will calculate the payload count and let you know once it says unknown that means it's probably bigger than what it you know what is recommended and when it says unknown I highly recommend not testing it because at that point you know your chance of getting it right is really slim so if it's something like 4 or 4 you'll see if the minimum length is 4 maximum length is 4 and if it contains both alphabets and numbers it's about a million requests and the payload set is one I'm not preferring admin and password I'll cover the payload set and just intro or stuff on another video this is just a general intro so that's where you are encoding or where you're giving your payloads now let's say if I'm a really crazy hacker or if I'm like you know really I do some weird shit just to troll people and what I did let's say ex example is I wrote my password down and I encoded the password to be base 64 so for example you know my password is security or something or you are brute forcing my password but you know that my password is not just an alphabet or a phrase or something but it's actually an encoded version of a phrase so for example if you're trying you know let me open a base 64 here and if you are trying to see you know you're gonna try like putting my password as security but you know just to troll with you guys I put it to be a base 64 so what if that's my password right and now the problem with intruder is now you're thinking how I'm gonna encode every single thing that burp is doing because you do not know what phrase it's gonna choose next when it's doing brute forcing for random character set from this with min length forward and max length forward so the question comes how are you going to do it intruder has a feature called payload processing so it tells the rule of how you want to tell or set the payload so if the payload is security you can set rules on how you want to modify it so because I know I'm um, I am trolling you guys and I have base 64 on my password all I'll do is I'll do encode so I'm encoding the payload to be a base 64 and what it will tell burp is every single payload is sending and let's say one of the payload is security or any payload so it will have anything like OSS red team whatever it's generating it will encode that to base 64 and then send it so I'm going to minimize this a little bit so just to show how it works you know I just want I don't want to do a long request uh, so I'm just going to send a 16 request the character set is 0 1 min length 4 max length 4 and if I do a start attack right now uh, you get an alert here so I want to quickly explain what the alert means in burp community Edison the uh, intruder version is really slow and it's designed to be slow so the functionality are disabled and your attacks are time throttled what that means is that it will slow down it has like threadings and it probably waits I think five seconds per request or something like that um, that's for burp suite community Edison if you end up using pro it goes super fast so right now we're, we are on free so I hit OK and let's wait for a while for this to be done so for example the first payload was empty and now you can see the payloads are not numbers right my character set is 0 1 but all these payloads it looks like it's encoded and that's what burp's doing if you noticed it's encoding all of my passwords and trying all of them down so in attack let's pause that so you know let's say if you're testing a website and if you end up finding whatever you wanted to see you can always go to attack uh, pause it or end it and here we have all the payloads that is sent with the status code and the length so as you can see in some cases I'm getting 429 
um, that's another status code so I highly recommend again looking up status code in this case if we go to 429 it says too many requests so what hacker one is trying to do is prevent me from brute forcing the password so it's telling me you're sending a lot of requests in this time frame slow down right and that's pretty much a lot of websites use when it comes to API's so look over status codes again and it's always helpful to know those uh, target is basically what we had so the attack phase is basically this so what you can do is like now let's say if I'm doing the attack already and I realize I made a mistake right I want to not do base 64 but instead I want to edit that uh, okay and I want to make it I don't know uh, let's see URL encode or something or no, let's change that uh, add a prefix so I know my first part of my password is let's say Rosen right if I know that's the first password of my password and I realize that when I'm doing the attack I can just pause the attack as I did before and go to the payload sector here so I don't have to go back on the intruder section anywhere here all I have to do is go on my intruder attack here change that uh, let's go here and enable that and then resume my attack so now if I go to results you'll see things will start to change let's make sure yeah, it's going through and you can see now instead of base 64 it's appending Rohan in the first part of the request every single time and as you can see as I said before burp intruder is really slow in response so it's taking quite a bit some time for each of those requests to go through and that's because we have the free version of burp right now so let's see if I want to uh, the attack already ended but if I wanted to end it I'll just do attack pause if you want to redo the attack just hit attack repeat and it will start again so that's the intruder feature uh, that's pretty much it for the intruder section now let's cover the decoder point now what is decoder um, if you guys remember there were some cases when we we're doing signing up for hack the box for example and you had to see the base 64 encode, encoding right at the end to get your key to sign in your sign up key you needed the base 64 encoded version and or you had the base 64 version and you wanted to decode uh, usually you can go to a website like this which is cybersafe uh, this is a super useful website you guys are free to look it up just to cybersafe and it was so the first result you see is this but let's see if I have this base 64 from a website I have my burp open uh, burp has a feature called decoder so all I do is paste this and you see I have this already here and I'll do decode as and I know this is burp, uh, base 64 so I'll select that and you can see it decoded it so burp already has the decoding version on it or encoding it so let's say if I'm making a CTF and I want to encode my flag so if the flag is OS is red team base 64 is awesome some number I'll just do encode as base 64 and you can see it's encodes it so decoder tab is super easy like especially when you're doing repeaters so let's say if you were messing around with the website here like let's say if we do go and instead of re responding with invalid credential let's say if hacker one responded with a session or something that's base 64 all I have to do is just go on decoder paste that and I'll see the result so that makes it really useful you know you don't have to open a new tab you don't have to go to Firefox Chrome or whatever and look for a base 64 decoding you can just paste it here and it will sort too so decoder is super simple uh, just play around with each of these and you'll slowly get hang of what they mean so you know it takes some time to understand all of those types but you will be fine as once you start looking around now that's pretty much knowing verb suite um, and seeing what the feature does now what we're going to do next is actually use this in a vernable web app so this thing now starts with you know I have not used this vernable web app before this is it I was re it was recommended by someone to me so I'm going to use that right now so if you look up Google Gruer, it's a vernable version that Google built so it has different cro cross-site scripting bug they have they probably have either I'm not sure if they have it or not but they'll have different kind of challenges so we're just going to hit continue and the reason I wanted to do this was uh, to help you guys understand how to use burp with a website that you're testing so if you're looking up Google Gruer, if you go on setup hit start and it says warning where is not secure do not upload any personal or private data so make sure you never save anything that's private there hit agree and start and now we're in a vernable web app so when you're testing a website one thing I always recommend is to understand how it works and in that case 
intercept becomes super useful but let's see if you guys cast this on the video you know pause the video and see if you'll figure it out here's the question do you think this request when I hit sign in is that going to get intercepted by burp suite or not so think about it you know just answer it on your own I'll answer it in about five seconds and the answer is probably not the reason if we go back to our target and if you uh, remember what I did before I told burp suite to only intercept hacker one right so if I go on my proxy have intercept on and hit sign in you'll see it loads right away I don't see it here so now I'll just do this and let's see if I just if I'm just playing with something in Google Grower all I'll do is I'll do add any and Google or I can just copy this here so this is what I'll copy not the whole URL but just the host name so minus the forward slash and that's about it and I'll hit OK so it's all selected I don't want to intercept hacker one anymore so I'll just do that and I'll go to proxy and have intercept open now if I do sign up as you can see this shows up here and it also shows me the server response because if you remember when I went here I said intercept server response based on this and also make sure the URL is in scope right so if I disable that it'll show me every URL response it will not intercept them but it will show me the server for this one I'm not going to intercept server so I'm just going to hit that now let's go and it says not secure so I'm just going to sign up with security security don't want to use any kind of credentials hit create account and you can see here's the request so I didn't want to use it yet so I'll just do forward and it says account created um, that's my login page so I'll just do that and I'm logging in so I want to see how the login works so here's the login feature so now there's another question for you guys uh, take your time to answer it you know pause the video or anything however you want to do it what is what are the parameter names in this uh, request what are the parameters that I'm sending so there are four parameters that I'm sending so think about it see if you can answer it if not I'm going to answer it right now all right so the answer is UID password for the get URL parameters for the cookie parameters I have Gruer E and Gruer ID so that's my instance ID and that's security author that's probably my username that's probably the role and that's my timestamp if I go to params I'll see the same thing so UID password PWD right my password I sent and the cookie values so do forward uh, it's just invalid username so why oh I'm already logged in so now this is our profile page right so we see uh, there are different things going on here so if you're testing a website if you're doing hacker one city up you are doing bug bounty if you're on security audit uh, see how these things work so let's say I don't want to do profile yet I want to see like what my snippets are so here are my snippets so I can save notes I can save different you know small notes and stuff now I want to see how it generates or shows me my snippets and there's this get request again the parameters are the cookie values on this there's no URL parameters side so it forward and so is that now let's see if I want to create a new one it says new snippet GTL so that's the URL and this is where it's loading the form right it's not creating it yet it says limited HTML is supported I'm just going to do OS this red team burp and hit submit once I do that as you can see it says new snippet to get request snippet that so what it's doing is sending a get request to create a new snippet with this value so the parameter here for the URL parameter is snippet and it's super useful to know these things because you can you know play around with them or if someone tells you I found this URL parameter what shall I do next it kind of helps you to know oh he's probably talking about this request you, know, you could do SQL index on either or cross site scripting whatever it is related to so I do forward and load my snippets so now it seems like there's a delete feature so I'll do delete snippet and there's index equals zero that's probably my ID so that's the URL parameter and because this is the first snippet on this whole instance that Google made for me it's going to be zero so I'll just do action send to repeater the reason I'm sending this to repeater is this looks like an interesting thing I'm deleting a snippet 
now there are different things that will come in mind to you so I'm just going to do forward go back here let's get to repeater and then we'll discuss this real quick so when you see things like this you see there's an ID passed in now a question that I'll ask you is what do you think an attacker will try to do will they try to see if they can delete someone's ID so like if I'm a malicious user or if I want to do some harm to the website you know I'll, I'll if I'm curious enough to I'll be like hmm it's passing an ID can I delete someone else's stuff or can I do a SQL injection and see the whole list of the snippets that everyone was sending right everyone had it saved so that's one reason why I sent it to repeater now I'll probably do things to start out just hitting one to see how it responds to it is this 200 okay now you see there's a CSS here and it says home security that's my user stuff it says invalid index one and the reason is I do not have any other users so for backup case to play around with this I'm going to open this here on my Chrome and I'm going to sign up and I'll say I'll create another one you know, Rohan Rohan and account created I'll do sign in and I'm already signed in because I was recently signing up so I'll do new snippet and I'll say super secret and do not delete and I'll hit submit now if you check the index of this it will do copy link or you can do inspect element with developer tools and you'll see the index is still zero and the reason is the previous one I had already removed right so let's see if that'll work if I can just do index zero and delete this one it may or may not work it might be unique to each user so we'll go down here and it says invalid index so let's do a refresh see if that's deleted it's not and the reason is now that I know how the website is working its index is unique per user so this zero is just for me and not for the second account I made so at this point I do not have an ID yet but I can obviously try things like a SQL injection you know hit that quotation mark and see if it responds with any kind of SQL injection it doesn't look like it's doing it so we'll still save this right so now a question for you guys I want to save this and name this request in repeater to say deleting a snippet now think about for a second and answer to yourself how will I do it alright so the way I will do it that delete process is by double clicking this as I said before right and then I'll just double click that change it to delete snippet and this becomes useful because if I want to come back and then play around with different features I know exactly what features they are so I'll go back put it on the uh, side by side view go to Gruer and then uh, go to profile so now I want to see how the profile works uh, let me hit update to see if it requires me to pass a password and here we have action update name security all password blah and all that stuff now send that to repeater because this is obviously looks like a sensitive request where I'm saving a profile and it forward forward okay uh, profile so user ID is that username so let's see if I want to send my username to the security Rohan and it intercept update will it ask me for a password we'll find out uh, that forward no passwords yet so if I go to profile as you can see it changes it to security Rohan now let's check our repeater tab to see if we can play around with this feature so we have name old password accent website so it doesn't seem like I can do much thing with it here directly right so it just has my name and it's just changing my info but we can also see that there's a user ID here now I have not tested this website before so I'm just approaching this blindly to see how it works you know username was called name so I wonder if I try ID equals will that work uh, let's give it a shot call security now uh, 302 redirect it's working there but I do not know if it works so what if I try changing uh, username for the guy or the ID Rohan and let's try Rohan have test and this might not work so we don't know yet so let's do go um, it just gives me a redirect again uh, let's refresh this website and as you can see it did not change so now we know that the ID is not there so it's probably editing based on these things right and I know already that this is my um, instance and this is my user identifier so 
there's another test I can do and this false all is still under insecurity of the object is what if I change security to be Rohan will that allow me to change Rohan's account let's see go it says 200 uh, let's see user does not exist interesting so let's repeat uh, refresh our page let's see what our cookie is so now we have to understand how the cookie parameter is and we go here and as you can see there's a unique name or this so far are right but we have a number before it so that might be something we'll have to figure out how how it works so we got a profile that's our stuff here we're not worried about it yet uh, let's do home and if I want to see all the snippets of Rohan let's do that so it says UID Rohan and it doesn't seem like it's giving me a user's um, user ID anywhere so that's probably for some security level uh, let's see if I can see my user ID here again I have not tested this website so I'm bound to fail on this you know I have never tested this before but we'll find out mm -hmm. so so far I cannot find the uh, insecure direct object here looks like but definitely this feature looks super interesting so just for the sake of the video and just to see how this works I'm just going to copy paste this in here or let me actually do it live so what you can do with proxies you can change stuff as you're doing stuff so for example if I want to uh, load profile there's edit profile option I'm going to change this equal that right so I'll do forward and as you can see log me in as that user so the only thing quote unquote preventing this is the ID but that's still something you know we can obviously look into and play around with it so the reason I wanted to show this is to show how repeater can be useful so for example now if I want to check delete snippet again I just go there and here's 17 for UID and I can in this case I attack by changing you know usernames and stuff and I can always rename it here so this is basically how Burpsuit works. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to get something out of it. I will upload the iDrop video probably tomorrow because as you can see it's 10 p.m. right now and we are recording this one right now. So I'll probably have that and RCE report, uh, uploaded by Friday at the least. Uh, probably iDrop will get uploaded tomorrow, RCE probably on Friday. Uh, iDrop was super useful. If you guys were not in class today, make sure you sign up for ctf.hacker101. That's a really useful website we use, you know, make sure you log in, choose our group. Um, there's a group link on the red team and to use that um, tomorrow on the video for IDOR, I'll explain why we're using CTF Hacker 101. It's advantage to you guys and give you guys a challenge to hack on that the students or that you guys who were there hacked on over the day when we were doing IDOR. So we targeted a specific challenge name and some people were able to solve it completely and some people were able to solve it more than 50 percent so you know it's an easy challenge it gets you ready on the mindset of idle testing and stuff like that so that's pretty much it for this video um i'm pretty sure this is really long right now i can already say when i'm recording this because i started at around 9 20 so sorry for a really long video but hopefully you guys were able to get more out of you know how to use burp suite uh, when I was teaching IDOR today, I know I went super fast with Burp Suite. I didn't cover much of it. And the reason was I was planning to do a video separately for Burp. So hopefully this helps everyone. Uh, if you're still stuck, let me know. And I can provide you more resources and guide you to you know some websites or anything that you guys need. Thank you very much for watching, guys.